with the introduction of server components in Next.js, it does provide several benefits of performance, keeping your data fetching on the server, keeping you know sensitive data on the server, and other benefits of kind of getting the best of both worlds of client rendering as well as server rendering. Now, with those benefits, you also are probably going to run into some issues. And one of those issues is keeping server-only code out of a client environment. And lucky for us, the team over at Next.js has a great kind of section in their docs on this topic. Now, I'm going to move my URL down a little bit lower so you can see where I'm at on the Next.js docs. I am at building your applications, rendering, composition patterns, and then I'm in the you know, this section of the page here. So what they basically go on to explain here is that this function here, on its surface, in a normal React app, you might think, okay, well, I can use this, this function all across my application. However, there's one kind of nuance here in which this env key that they use here, it's not prefixed with next public, which ma basically makes that this environment variable is only accessible for a server component. So if someone tries to use this function with a client component, this is going to default to an empty string, and this individual is going to make this request without an API key, which is likely going to result in an error. And this is kind of tricky because if someone uses this in a client component here, well, they, they might not know why things aren't working and it might not be completely clear to them what's kind of going on here. However, Next.js does provide a, what I think is a decent solution for this. And this is their server only package in which you can basically say that this is a server only function. And if you try to use this function on a client component, your application is not going to build and you're going to catch that error right away. And you're going to get an error message that is kind of explaining what's going on. And they go on to say, you'll receive a build time error. So let's actually head over to VS Code here. And hopefully this will make things a little bit more clear. So what we're going to do is create a new Next.js application. So I'm going to run in my terminal here in VS Code npx create next app at latest. And then I'm going to name this server hyphen only. And I will also link this project in the description below if you want to use that as a reference. No TypeScript, no ESLint. I am going to use Tailwind just because I usually default to that, but we are not actually going to be using Tailwind in this project. We're not going to use the SRC. We are going to use App Router. We're not going to use the default import alias. So once this finishes up here, I'm going to go file open and then open this project within VS Code. So we have this project here and we're just going to do something very kind of simple here. So first off, we have our regular kind of default page here within our app router, our page.jsx, our root page. But we're going to create another folder here and we're just going to call this client. And then within our client folder within the app router, we're going to add a page.jsx file. And this is going to be a client component here. So I'm going to call this use client, and then we're just going to export default function client. And then I'm just going to return an H1 that says client page. And this will just allow us to kind of see the problem that we're going to have here. So once we have this, now we want to create a, a function similar to what Next.js did to where we're going to do a server only get data. So what we're going to do is within our app folder, we are going to create another new folder and I'm just going to call this utils. And within our utils folder, we're going to create a data.js file. And then within this data.js file, this is where we are going to make a request to just get some data from a free API that we're going to use. So I'm going to do export in async function and we'll just call it get data. And then we're going to hit a movie API. So we need to send a movie ID. So I'm going to say const movie underscore ID is equal to 550. 
And this is just some movie that I chose. It's actually a, a fight club is what movie it is going to be. But then we'll do const API underscore key is going to equal process.env dot API underscore key. And we will add this to our env.local file here in just a second. And then we're going to say const URL and maybe I'll just go URL is equal to, and this is going to be HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash API dot the movie DB dot org forward slash three forward slash movie forward slash. And then we need to use backticks here because we're going to inject our movie ID. So after movie forward slash, this is where we're going to add our movie ID. So dollar sign curly brace movie ID. And then we're going to do question mark API, and it's going to be lowercase API underscore key is equal to dollar sign curly brace and our API key. So that is going to be the URL. And then from here, we're going to make a fetch request to this URL. And then we are going to, and you could also use, and let me make sure I use URL, all capitals, and you can use async wait. I'm just going to do a dot then here. And then I'm going to do the response. And then I'm going to say, if not res dot okay. And we're going to throw a new error. I'll just say HTTP error, but if we, if it is response to okay, then we'll just return res dot JSON. And then we'll also add a catch here. So we'll do a dot catch and this will potentially contain an error here in which we will just cancel dot error this error. So ideally this will return some data if everything is you know all correct with our api key and stuff like that now from here we need to add our api key so where we're going to get this is developer.themoviedb.org forward slash reference forward slash intro forward slash getting started and i will make sure to hopefully link this in the description box below if you're following along with me now you are going to see like up here to log in. It's completely free to create an account. So create a free account, log in, and then come back to this page after you're logged in. And then once you are back here, make sure you're on API reference. And then here where it says authenticate, and I'm probably blurring out the API keys on this page. So like right here and also right down here, but you should see a, a number kind of string here and make sure if that you are set on API key. You have access token auth and API key. Make sure that you are selected on API key. And then what we're gonna do here is we're gonna copy this API key and then we're gonna head over to VS Code. And what we're gonna do is in the root of your application, so on the same level is your app directory here, add a new file.env.local. So make sure this is on the same level as your next config package.json, make sure it's not within your app directory. But here it's just gonna API underscore key. And then I'm gonna paste in my API key here, and then I'm gonna leave the page. I'm not gonna show you this just cause it's gonna make it easier for me when I edit this in post. So I pasted my API key in there. So this should be all set up, ready to go. So now that we have this in place, what we're gonna do is in our terminal, we're gonna run npm run dev. And this should start our project up on localhost 3000. And let's head over to localhost 3000 and see our running project. So as you can see, we have just our template Next.js project. And if we go to forward slash client, you should also see client page. So now we're ready to make our data requests here. So within our server component here, and it's a server component because it defaults to that and we didn't put use client at the top of this file, we can just say const data is equal to, and let's make this an async function, await get data, and we're going to import that from our utils file. And then we'll just console.log our data. And then we'll come back, I'll refresh this page, and then if we open our terminal, we see that the data 
is undefined here. So I definitely made some sort of mistake here and I see what I'm doing wrong. So we need to make sure to return fetching this data. And then if I come back, I refresh this page and I open the terminal, I should see just some movie data here that's getting console logged right here within my homepage for just some data regarding a Fight Club movie. So this works as expected. We can now use this within our application. But what if we try to use this within our client component? So let's go to our client component here. And to fetch this and to see it, we're going to have to do it the client side way. So I'm going to say const data comma set data is equal to use state importing that from react and set it to null and then we're going to use a use effect also importing that from react and then i'm going to say async function get movie data and then i'm just going to say const d and we're going to use that instead of data so we don't have any shadowing of variables here is equal to wait and then we'll call our get data function from our utils file and make sure to import that as well and then we will just set our data for what is returned there and then we'll make sure to call get movie data within our use effect and we'll call this on mount and then we'll also console.log our data so now if we come back and we go to our client page we don't get any errors but what if we open our console within our browser well what we're going to see is server responded with a status of 401. So let's open our network tab here and let me refresh this page. And we see when I make this request to the moviedb.org, our API key is undefined. And that is because our API key in our data.js function is not a next public API key. So we're not shipping this API key to the browser. We're trying to keep this API, API key only on our server to keep all of our sensitive data on our server. But as you can see, this could be a, like a really tricky error because like, you know, our page still renders here and it's not immediately clear what's going on. So let's now use the server only package from Next.js. So it makes this much more obvious what's going on. So we don't run into this issue and we don't have this server data leaking to the client because someone might try to go fix this by just making this api key a public api key and maybe you really don't want that to happen so you really want to make this server only so what we're going to do here is heading back to next.js let's copy npm install server only and then let's open another terminal and install that server only package and then within our git or our data.js file let's import the server only module and now if we come back to our browser we see you're importing a component that needs server only that only works in the server component but one of its parents is marked with use client so it's a client component and you can see here the get data it's a server component only but we're trying to use it in this client component here so it says one of these files is the use client so it makes it very clear that this is supposed to be a server only function that we're trying to use in a client component. So to fix this, we just need to remove in our client page, remove our data fetching here. I mean, we can also just make this a non-client component, but we'll remove that data fetching. And now we see our project builds as usual. And if we come back to our homepage, this all still works. And we should still see the data in our terminal here. And we do because that is a server component and it aligns with our server only function here. So this is one way in Next.js that you can prevent some of your server only code from kind of breaching to the client. And hey, if you wanted to use this data within a client component, but you didn't want to share this API key, then you know what you could do is you could potentially pass this data down into a client component from a server component. So, you know, we could get it in a server component parent and then pass it down, or you could create like a server component wrapper wrapping around this page that gets the data and then it passes it down to the client component. 
I think that would probably make the most sense to me at least. So with that, hopefully you learned something from this and hopefully it helps you out. So thanks for tuning in and I'll see you in that next one.